Jobless rates are in double digits. Homelessness and hunger are at all time highs. Peace in the world is fleeting. There is war, there is terror. How can we give thanks? There was a day years ago, not unlike today, when terror was everywhere. Foreign occupation came from distant countries. Death and destruction were commonplace. Peace could not be found. Yet, into that world 2,000 years ago came the Prince of Peace, who lived and died and rose again for you and me. While your world may seem to be falling apart, Jesus overcame the world through his life, through his death, and through his resurrection. And because of him, we can be thankful today with hope in our hearts that a better day is coming. Hope, bought with a price, and for that, above all else, we give thanks. All right, everybody, good morning. How you doing? All right, well, good to see everybody. Thank you for coming out. My name is Andy Clark. I'm one of the pastors here at the church, and if I haven't had a chance to meet you, I'd love to do so. So if we can catch up after service or something, that'd be great. But uh, so we're so glad you're here. Uh, we're in a message series about being thankful. And hey, why not, right? Thanksgiving's right around the corner, so let's talk about thankful. But you know, actually, it has a it has a whole lot more uh, meaning. I think it's a very timely, timely uh, uh, message series that we're in. And uh, for one, you know, because Thanksgiving is coming up, and I do. I mean, I really like Thanksgiving. It's a nice holiday, and you know, if you think about it, it's very unique because Thanksgiving is the only holiday where you get to eat the mascot. You know? That'd be a weird thing to do at Christmas, I would think. Um, also, too, you know, it's. It's kind of unique, too, how, like, you see, like, every four years, I guess, like, you know, the election would fall in between uh, Halloween and Thanksgiving. Because for one thing, you know, the Halloween is a, is a scary holiday, right? You know, that's supposed to be our scary holiday. Well, for a lot of time, you know, you, you know, for a lot of people, the election can be a scary thing. And then as far as it plays into Thanksgiving, you know, for Thanksgiving, you get turkey for a day. But on the election, you get a turkey for the next four years. So, uh <laughs> But I'm, you know, honestly, my family, they said, Andy, do not do the Thanksgiving jokes. And I said, I'm sorry, I just can't quit cold turkey. Okay. So, I mean, all right, I'm done. I'm done here. All right. But honestly, I mean, I think we can all agree, you know, I think we need to see some positive in our world today. You know, man, we need a positive change. And honestly, you know, that positive change begins with us. You know, it does. It begins with us. So today's message in our message series about being thankful is called Wrap your mind around Thanksgiving, right? How can we wrap our minds around this thing called Thanksgiving? So last week, Pastor Mike, he kicked us off uh, with a message about being content. And that's very, you know, it's a good foundation of being thankful. So if you'd like to listen to that message, you can do so. It's on our, it's on our website, hrclex.life. You can go on there and check it out there. But he did mention a verse last week. He started and ended with the verse, and I want to uh, open us up with the same verse again today. I think it's worthy of looking at again, and that's in the book of Philippians, okay? It's in the book of Philippians. Uh, so uh, Philippians is in the New Testament. It's about halfway through the New Testament, and uh, it's a letter written by Paul. And so today we're going to start off in Philippians, and we're going to flip up a, a book to Colossians as well. They're, uh, they're right beside each other, so, uh, so they should be convenient for you. So we're going to start off in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. And like I said, uh, this was written by the Apostle Paul. It was to a church in, uh, in Philippi, right, uh, a little over 2,000 years ago. So he writes in verse 4, and I mean chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, he says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So he says, so he says to uh, not be anxious about anything, but with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. And so, you know, we go, you know, we, uh, you know, we have problems in our life. And so we go to God in prayer. Okay, we know what prayer is. And then, and then the supplication, uh, your version may say petition. And what that is, it's like 
It's a specific request, okay? Praying, you got a specific request. And I think we all want the peace of God that comes along with that process, you know? But I think for some of us, maybe sometimes I know with me, uh, maybe the, we don't have the peace with it or maybe we're not getting the answers. Or even just in general, I think a lot of times what we miss is the with thanksgiving part. So what is thanksgiving? What is it? Is it, is it a holiday? You know, do we have to, do we have to bake a turkey and open up a, a, a can of all-natural cranberry sauce to talk to God? You know, I hope not because I don't like cranberry sauce that much, you know, so it's, so it's not about that. So this Thanksgiving, uh, when you look up the word in the Greek, okay, because the uh, New Testament was written in Greek, and it's a very ancient language, a very rich language. Uh, sometimes we don't really have the words to express what the true meanings are, or maybe it's kind of expounded upon, and so it kind of falls in different words, and that's how thanks is. As we'll see today, there's a couple of different ideas behind this thanks and Thanksgiving, okay? So for one, he's talking about here, it means grateful language, but it says this prayer expresses the grateful acknowledgement of past mercies as distinct from seeking future ones. So it's acknowledging past mercies as separate from the ones that we're seeking in the future, right? It's bringing into remembrance what God has already done aside from asking for, for future ones now. So basically, like this process here, he's, he's talking about, he says, do not be anxious about anything. So obviously, so obviously, there's something that we're anxious about, anxiety, right, stress. And so we have a problem that stresses us out. And I mean, there's plenty of problems of life to be stressed about. It could be the uh, situation today, the world and our culture and all that stuff. Or, you know, it could be more personal. It could be something that allows it. Maybe our job. You know, maybe our job has us stressed out. Or maybe we're looking for a job and that's stressing us out. It could be a provision. Uh, maybe we're looking for some type of provision. It could be money. Right? We always need more money. So, we're, you, know, you know, we have that issue. could be a relationship issue. It could just be with somebody that we know or, you know, whatever. So we have these issues and say, okay, I'm going to go to God about this. So here we go. I'm going to pray. So we start praying, and then here comes that supplication. Here comes that specific request. Okay, God, I'm praying. I have this issue, and this is my request to you. So he's saying somewhere in this process, we have to stop. And not really look towards the future one we're requesting, but go ahead and go back in the past and start remembering what God has already did for us in the past. See, so go ahead and start remembering those, those specific mercies. But even this, even, even before, how about this, even before we pray, right, we go ahead and do this. Because it talks about not just remembering, but it also talks about appreciating, right, remembering and appreciating past mercies. So it's not just about remembering, right, and bringing it back into remembrance. It's also about letting it soak in, right, remembering it to a point to where we actually think about it, you know, we're contemplating on it to a point. It starts to change our mind. It starts to change the way we feel. We start appreciating it. You know, just like if somebody gives you a gift. Oh, it makes you feel good. You're like, oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. It's kind of the same concept here, you know, to where we actually think about it, we feel, and we appreciate it. So here, so, like I said, you know, we have that. So we're remembering God's mercies in the past separate from the ones that we are seeking in the future. See, so we can try that. See, try that, and we'll see how our prayer life enhances. See, we can go to God and approach the throne of grace with that, and we can see how our answers enhance. We can also see how our peace enhances as well. See, we're starting to begin to wrap our mind around Thanksgiving, right? We're starting to... Start, starting to see what that means a little bit. And I make this point because I don't think a lot of us, and, you know, you know myself included, you know, before this, is, uh, is I don't think we really see the value of Thanksgiving in our lives. You know, I don't think we truly understand, uh, you know, what it can do for us in our lives, the importance of it, and how it can really help in our lives. Because if we think about Thanksgiving, we might think of like a reaction to life. Oh, life went the way I wanted it to. I got what I wanted, right? I'm, I'm thankful now, God. Everything's going the way that I perceived that it should, so now I'm thankful. Or maybe it's like a mind frame. Okay, yeah, I get it. Be thankful, right? Yeah, okay, I have this in my life. I got, thanks, God. But see, we're seeing here in Philippians 4 that think, that being thankful is not just a reaction to life. It's not just a mind frame, but it's also part of the solution to our problems. See, thankfulness is part of the solution to problems. And I think that's an interesting point because whenever I think about problems, I think about 
what has to be done. I think about something I have to physically do. I have this issue here. What do I physically need to do to start getting into the solution? But right here, we're not physically doing anything. We are spiritually and mentally gathering forces and simply remembering in the past and allowing God's mercy and grace to change us in a positive way. And that's part of the solution. See, I don't, see, I don't think like that. But that is part of our solution to problems. And I love it because, you know, Pastor Mike, see, he talked about contentment last week. And one of the definitions he gave us was realizing how much we already have and how much God has already given us and how rich we already are. See, and that's why, and that's why the Lord had to start with contentment because that foundation of, of, of that perception of God and how he's working in our lives goes a long way in our lives. So we see that this thankfulness is important, right? It's not just a reaction in life. It's not just a mind frame. It's, it's bigger than that. So how can, we, how can we start to grasp this, right? How can we start to really wrap our minds around this true thanksgiving? All right, so that's where the message is going to go now, right? That's where we're going to gear towards now. So now we're going to go to Colossians. Okay, we're going to flip up the book. Uh, we're going to go to Colossians chapter 3, and uh, we're going to see what the Bible has to say here. So in Colossians 3, Paul gives these, uh, gives these goals to aspire in. So in Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2, he says, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are of earth. So this mind frame. Right, he's saying, set your mind on things above. So this term set, it can mean two things. Like if you have something and you set it on a shelf, right? So it's almost like we take our mind and we take our thought life and we take it and we set it on the throne with Christ. But not just that. Set means like to set a course, right? It's like a direction, okay? It's to fix. So he's like, set your mind, fix your mind, set your direction on that with Christ. So then he goes into like how we can start trying to achieve this goal, all right, of, of setting our minds on things above. So first thing he goes into, he, he starts talking about behaviors, behaviors, like the old nature versus the new nature, because our behaviors play a lot into it. You know, if we're trying to change our mind, if we're trying to get a new way of thinking, then our lifestyle has to start adding up to it a little bit. You know, we can't, it's hard to keep doing the same things and then think we're going to think a different way. You know, it, it all plays in together. So he starts talking about these behaviors, like of our old nature. Uh, he talks about, you know, What's that about being immoral? You know, a lot of, uh, a lot of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, sexual immorality. Talks about anger. You know, you know, be careful being angry too much and angry all the time and doing these angry actions. Slander, you know, false talk and gossip and tearing people down, that lifestyle. Talks about obscene talk. Uh, you know, really negative talk, uh, maybe even using some curse words and stuff. And so he's saying, you know, watch out for these things. You know, and, but, but then he starts talking about these good attributes to aspire towards this new nature. He talks about compassion, understanding people, being compassionate about them, but not just that, to where that spawns us to action as well, right? To where we, to where it's like compassion with action. He talks about gentleness, uh, you know, being gentle with people, especially in sharing our faith. You know, speaking the truth in love, we want to talk to people, but we want to talk to them the way they can handle. Forgiveness, you know, forgiveness is always good to aspire towards love, true love, agape love like God has to where it's like love with no price tag type deal, you know, to where we do, uh, you know, we're trying to be a service to man and God, and it's unconditional, right? So he says instead of doing these, right, right, like so while you're setting your mind on things above, while you're fixing, right, while you have these heavenly goals, here's some, here's some ways to help. Uh, you know, gain that, and that is by applying these spiritual principles in our life. So then he says in verse 15, he says, And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. So once again, he's telling us how to achieve these goals, and being thankful is part of the solution. And, uh, you know, it's interesting how peace and thankful keep getting lumped in the same thought process. So here's these two aspects to, 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 to aspire towards. So when he says thankful here, okay, when we start breaking down the word, uh, it, means, it means to be agreeable, and it, mean, it stresses the mindfulness of favors. Okay, the mindfulness of favors. 
And this is a way that we can start wrapping our minds around thankfulness too. So in these two letters here, we see that Paul, he's, he's giving stress to our thought life, right? He's telling us to uh, set our minds on things above, to be thankful, remembering things of the past. And we're going to read in a little bit in Philippians where he talks about to think about such things. So he's giving, he's giving this, this direction to our thought life because he knows how important and how powerful our thought life can be, especially when it comes to being truly thankful. And uh, so it does, because our thought life holds a lot of power. Because some people might say, well, I mean, you know, I, you know I, I've heard about the positive thinking. I've heard about focusing my mind. But, I mean, because it really, you know, what I focus on, does it really, you know, help me that much? Well, it does, you know. Uh, it actually directs our lives and our feelings. Because in Romans 12, too, it talks about this thing. It says, uh, it says, to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then we can test God's perfect will. And so, you know, being transformed by renewing of our mind, that's something that happens anyway, you know. So what we renew our mind with, where our mind is going, it transforms us. It changes us, whether it's for the better or whether it's for, you know, I don't want to say worse, you know. So, so, we have this, uh, so we have this going on because our thoughts produce feelings and feelings produce reaction. You know, we think something that makes us feel a certain way, and then a lot of times we react off of our feelings. Granted, we don't have to. You know, there can be a thought process in between thoughts and feelings, uh, our, our, our feelings and reactions. But a lot of times people are just more kind of geared to, to, to just work off of feelings, right? And so, and so we see this. So we, so we have to be careful what we choose to focus on because, you know, these thoughts are going to produce feelings and these feelings are going to produce reactions. Like, for example, uh, say we're on a diet, okay? And uh, apparently that's not me. Okay, I am not on a diet, okay? I am on the eat everything you can see diet, okay? And it's still not working, obviously. But so say we're on a diet and we say, okay, man, I'm a, you know, well, I got a piece of lettuce in there, man, and that, man, that thing's sounding good right now. <laughs> I'm going to go and get that lettuce and that carrot. Me and my rabbit, we're going to share a meal together. And uh, so you go in there and look at your carrot and your, and your lettuce and you say, ah, man, you know, I'm not feeling it. So you look in your freezer and there's that ice cream. You're like, oh man, no, nope, not right now. But you go, you, you go to sit down in your chair and you start thinking about that ice cream. You're like, oh boy, man, I'd be good with some chocolate syrup and some cherries and, and all that stuff. And then you start feeling it, you know. And the next thing you know, you're bolting towards your refrigerator. See, so the thoughts and the feelings produce the reactions. Or... No, nah, but I mean, like for real, note, like think about like uh, like anger or like a resentment. You know, the power that really holds over us. Somebody does something to us or we start thinking about something that makes us angry, you know, and then we really give it that time. We start dwelling on it. We really start to focus on it, and then we start bringing other things into remembrance or we start, act, you know, we start imagining things that haven't even happened yet, and it makes us mad, you know, and the more we think about it, the more upset we become to eventually maybe we plot revenge or, you know, maybe we get back at somebody or we lash out on our family, you know, so here we are. We see a, a situation that totally changed the way we feel and made us react, or we chose to react on it. But see, it can be the same way for positive. It can be the exact same way. Positive thoughts and positive actions have the same effect. They can change us for the better, and they can produce better reactions as well. But, of course, the thought life, I mean, it's hard, right? It's hard to change that. It's hard to focus on good things because, let's face it, life is tough, right? Life is tough. I mean. There's always bills to pay, and, you know, things are going to break down, uh, you know, and a lot of times our first reaction to life isn't thankfulness. Yay, my car broke down. I got to spend $500. Woo, I'm so thankful. You know, that's usually not our first reaction to life. Uh, but, and really, like, our thought life is like anything else. If something's bad for us, we'll jump headfirst into it, you know. But if something's good and positive, we drag our feet. Kind of like, the, you know, between sin and spiritual growth. If something's sinful, man, oh, yeah, man, you know, we go right for it. And then when it comes time to read the Bible and pray and do all these things, we're like, oh, I don't want to pray. But, man, I'll, I'll go over here and do this like crazy, you know. It's the same way with our thought life. If something's bad or something negative happens to us, then, man, we'll dwell on that and we'll focus on that. But when it comes time to think of positive things, God's grace and all these other things, it's like, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll, yeah, I'll think about that for a bit. But I'm not going to dwell on it or anything. So, you know. And it's tough, and 
And that's one thing my dad told me. Uh, he, you know, he said, look, Andy, you know, you can wake up every day and you can focus on bills. You can focus on problems. You can focus on deadlines. And, you know, it's not really going to do that much good. He said, or you can wake up and you can think about God and you can think about your family and you think about positive things and you'll have a whole lot better day. And, you know, that's something my dad told me and, and that's something I hold on to. So we see how that works. All right. And that's really what's called being mindful, okay? Uh, that has a lot to do with mindfulness. Because when we look at the definition of that word thankful, it, it talks about a good definition of thankful is of being mindful of God's favor. Being mindful of God's favor. Like I said, it's more than just a reaction, right? It's being, it's being mindful. So what does mindful mean, right? What does mindfulness really mean? Well, mindfulness is something that we do that whenever we keep something like on the forefront of our brain. You know, it's something that's kind of on the front thought process. It, a, a lot of times it's what drives us, right? It, it's, what, it's what makes us, uh, you, you know, make decisions, and it kind of overrides everything else. Like, for example, say we get a speeding ticket, okay? Now, I know everybody in here is, you know, we're good Christian drivers, and we don't speed or anything. I get that, but let's just say, for example, okay? And, uh, and so, you know, we get a speeding ticket. And that hurts, man. It does. You know, I mean, man, you know, the insurance goes up and you got to pay a lawyer a couple hundred dollars and all that stuff. And so, you know, that's tough. So for the next couple of weeks or a few months, you know, we're, we're following the speed ticket. You know, we're following the speed limit. We're being mindful of our speed. I am honing in on my speed and that is driving, you know, that is the driving force about me driving the speed limit. So I'm being very mindful of my speed because of that. Or maybe like in a marriage, you know, like, like say we get in an argument uh, with our spouse. And, uh, you know, you work things out so for the next few weeks, months, hopefully years, you know, we're being very mindful not to say that or, or, or try to do that. See, that's mindfulness. It's never something happens and it changes our thinking. And so we keep it on the forefront of our brains. And so this mindfulness, honestly, you know, as Christians, you know, we're trying to aspire to be like God. We're trying to aspire to be good Christians. So this mindfulness is absolutely something that we need to be aware of and something that we need to practice for the better. Because it's hard to change our mind. It's hard to change our thinking as Christians, right? So this mindfulness, being mindful, is something that we, is a tool that we have, that God has given us, that we can use for the better. It helps us wrap our minds around thankfulness. So this thankful, it talks about being mindful of God's favor. And the very root of this word, it means well favored. Well favored. I mean, I love it because really, if you think about how well-favored we really are, I mean, how well-favored are we really? God, oh, man. I mean, God, I mean, think about the gospel. We're separated from him because of original sin. God could have left mankind a long time ago, but he stuck with us. And not just that, he knows we can't bridge that gap back to him. So he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come up with a solution. <clears throat> you guys, y'all don't want the solution, right? You're running from me. I'm trying to come towards you even more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my son, Jesus Christ, to this earth to live that perfect life. You cannot live because, you know, you know, because you can't bridge that gap. And Jesus said, absolutely, I'll go to this earth, and I'll live a perfect life, and I'll go to the cross. I'll sacrifice myself on a cross, right? A horribly painful death for a bunch of people who didn't even care that he was doing it anyway, for a bunch of people who, who didn't even want it in the first place, goes this excruciatingly painful death. I mean, think about how well-favored we are for that to happen. And even now. As Christians, we're not perfect. You know, we're not perfect, but God continues to stick with us. And I mean, he fights to bless us. Think about it like that. God is trying to find reasons to bless us. You know, he's trying to find reasons. And so here we are. A lot of times we're the one fighting the blessings, right? We're the ones off track. And God's like, man, come on. You know, man, I, you know, I want to bless you, man. I want to bless you even more than I already have. And he's given us all freedoms in Christ. All freedoms in Christ. And he done it so that we can serve one another in love. But a lot of times, we're the ones who use all freedoms to indulge in the sinful nature, which he tells us not to do. But you know what? He loves us anyway. I mean, Romans 6 says that we're, we're, 
Where sin abounds, grace abounds even more. <laughs> From a God who really doesn't like sin, but loves us too much. I mean, so think about that. See, see, doesn't that change the way you feel? Doesn't that make you feel good? See, doesn't that make you feel blessed? Doesn't that make you feel highly favored? Doesn't that just change the way you feel? See, that's appreciation. That's bringing it into remembrance and appreciating it, right? Feeling it. Let it do that. So imagine taking that into the world. That's what it's talking about. Collect that. Be mindful of that. Let that be the thought process that directs you through the world. Not fear, not anger, not resentment, not all these other things. Let that, let that be on the forefront of your brain. And that's what thankfulness is talking about here. That's wrapping our minds around thankfulness. If you notice, the word thinking and thanking are practically the same word. God does that on purpose. Because the other definition of this is agreeable. See, we have to be in agreement with God. We have to be in agreement. If we really want the God, life God wants for us, if we really want to be truly effective, we have to be in agreement with God. And a lot of times it's our minds that are not in agreement with God. So if we can wrap our brains around thankfulness, this is how we can be more on, you know, it talks about keeping in step with the Spirit. This is how we can keep better in step with the Spirit if we have our minds wrapped around thankfulness. And so now we are in agreement with God, and now it's a whole different story. It's a whole different story. So this setting our minds is big. It's huge. So today I want to leave us off with some, with some other ways the Bible says to set our minds, right? Because this is important. This is such a big aspect, especially to being thankful. So we'll go back to Philippians chapter 4, and we're going to read the next two verses where we left off. And it says this in verses 8 and 9, starting off with verse 8. It says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is anything, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Think about these things. Set your mind on these things. See, that's after prayer. He says, go to God, pray about it. Set your petition, set your request, do your supplication. Bring it to remembrance. That peace of God will be with you. Now, after that, set your mind on this. Right, set your mind on this. The enemy's there. He's ready to devour us. He knows the battlefield's in the mind a lot of times. So once you've prayed about it, go ahead and set your mind on godly things. Go ahead and set your mind on things above. This is going to help you. It's going to help your prayer life. It's going to help your faith. Go ahead and set your mind. Because a lot of times I think we pray and we walk away. So we have to pray and we have to keep it with us. So he says, think about what is true and what is right. These words talk about reality. I mean, think about the true reality of a situation. Because a lot of times, like, our perception of something is totally off from the way life truly is. I mean, we can have a hundred things going right, and three things in life aren't the way we want it to be, and we'll dwell on those three things and forget all about those hundred things that are going right. Somebody can do a thousand good things to us, and they'll do one thing that we don't like, and we'll take that one thing and run with it and just leave all the other good that they've done. What is true? What is right? Like, what is the true perception? Right now, hey, who's in charge, man? Is God in charge? Come on. See, like it says, be transformed by renewing your mind. Then you can test and see what God's will is. God, what's your will right now? Okay, we'll go renew your mind. God, God, I don't understand what's going on right now. Where's your thought life? What are you thinking about? You thinking about me? You focused on, but not me, God. Are you, are you focused on God? Or are you focused on what the perception of people is trying to make us feel? 
That's what he's talking about, just. Just. What's the reality, right? What's the reality? Is it pure? Our thought life, is it pure? Is it angry? Is it revenge? Is it lustful? Is it gossip? Do we know the truth about somebody, or do we think we know the truth about that person? It's not pure. Cast it out. The Bible says take every thought. Cast it away. Replace it. Not thinking about something is thinking about something. Replace it all together. And, and Colossians gives us a great thing to focus our mind on, compassion. How can we understand people better? How can we let that spawn us into action? How can we forgive people? You know, how do we take that time that we spend trying to be mad at somebody and try to replace it with trying to forgive them? How can we be of love to somebody? How can we be of service to God and man? How can I get outside of myself, quit focusing on me and my problems and what people can do for me, and how do I look and see where I can be the positive change in the world that I want to see? How do I truly love? He says, think about those things. And we'll see. See, thoughts produce feelings and produce reactions. We, we be mindful of those. Put those on the forefront of our minds. And see how that works. So this is my challenge. Verse 9. Paul says, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. And the peace of God. We'll be with you. Do not be hearers of the word only, right? Be doers. That's the thing. We have to practice these things. Faith is living and active. We have to put things into practice in our Christian walk. So this is our, this is my challenge to myself and everyone listening. It's to acknowledge, to remember, to appreciate what God has done in the past. Carve out time. Carve out that time in the morning. Before we even face the day, before, you know, because we wake up, man, and there's plenty of fear. There's plenty of things to think about. Get, get, let's go to God, right? We're praying and we're, and we're doing a supplication. Well, let's remember what God has done in the past and not just remember it, but let it soak in. And if we have to, like, write down on a list, right, we call them gratitude lists. And we, you know, you write it down. And you don't just write it down, oh, I'm grateful for my family, and move on. No, why are you grateful for your family? What is it about it? Start thinking about why you're truly grateful for that. God, I'm grateful for salvation. Why? Why are we grateful for salvation? Let that, let that go, man, like, and let that sink in. Why are we truly grateful? How do we form this appreciation within us that actually changes? And then, after we pray, like I say, don't just pray and go away. Bring that with us, right? Let that be. Once we build ourselves up, once we think about grace and salvation and the gospel, we think about all those great things that we have in our lives, don't forget about it. Don't just leave it there. Take it with us. Let that be on the forefront of our minds, right? Bring that into remembrance as we're going through the day. Leave out the house with that kind of mindfulness, right? Let that be through it and replace the negative thoughts. And take verses like Philippians 4.8 and write it down on a note card. And if we're getting through the day and we find our mind wandering, pull that out and say, okay, what's pure? Let me think about that. What's lovely? Let me think about that. God, show me the truth. What's excellent right now? Let me think about that. And that way we can set our minds. That way we can continue this mind frame because the world's going to want to take it away. Satan's going to want to take it away. He's a lion around us waiting to devour anything. And if you think our thought life isn't in that anything, then we're already deceived and we're already losing. So while we're going through the day and we got this positive mind frame, now it's time for the actions, right? Put it into practice. How can I be the positive change? Let me look around. How can I be that positive change in the world today? Let me think about ways to be of service to God and man. Let me just look around and just do what needs to be done in the moment. It doesn't have to be this widespread thing. It doesn't have to be on Facebook. It doesn't have to be one Saturday a month. How can I be of service to God and man around me? God, what is your will? How can I help? Is it just loading groceries in the car for somebody? Is it opening the door? Is it looking at somebody and smiling and saying, you're not invisible to me? Right? Is it just acknowledging that people are there and, and being nice to them? That's little things, right? 
and look for the beauty around us. I mean, man, we're getting so, so lost and, and all these other things. So much beauty around us. I mean, creation, for one thing, is beautiful. It, it, it's mystical. It's mysterious. Most of us don't even understand it. Not just that. I mean, man, when we see a family together and they're, you know, we, we, you know with their baby, that's beautiful. Find the good in somebody instead of their bad. That helps change our mind to the way we think about them. So that's my challenge to me and everyone in here, that, my, that, that thankfulness mind frame. And you know what? We can try it. Who knows? It just might work. If it doesn't, don't worry. The world will definitely refund your misery. Right? We haven't lost anything. We've got a whole life of stinking thinking. Because, you know, like we know, there's, there's plenty of negativity. There's plenty of unthankfulness waiting there for us. Because really it's not so much about, you know, so we're wrapping our minds around thankfulness. And then you know what happens? Thankfulness wraps itself around our minds. It becomes a way of life. It becomes a way. And then we can truly be. And like I said, the number one thing to be thankful for is the gospel. And we've got So if anybody's here today and you think God is not for you, you don't know why you find yourself sitting in a church or watching online. You don't know why it appeared on your screen today. You don't know why your friend shared it and all of a sudden you're watching it. It's because God loves you. Because he's for you. Because you have a God target on your forehead. And he's not going to stop until you give your heart to him. And even there he's not going to stop. He loves you. He wants you. He's not worried about what you did. He's worried about your eternal salvation and your soul. So if you're tired of fighting today, if you're tired of that, you can give your heart to the Lord. You can surrender your heart. And it's through believing the gospel, what I talked about, that Jesus did live on this earth. He did die on the cross for us, taking on our sins. He did, he did go to the grave, but he rose three days later. And the Bible says never we believe that in our heart, we confess it with our mouth, we can be saved. He puts his Holy Spirit within a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. So if you want to do that today, I'm about, to, I'm about to pray in a moment, and I'll get to the gospel prayer. And it's not the fact that you said it word for word. It's the fact that you truly believe it, and you're telling God. He can save you. I can't. I'm just leading you through the prayer. That's your prayer to God, and that's your salvation. God's awesome. Go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for just your dedication to us. God, you <laughs> help us bring into remembrance right now, Lord, what you do for us in our lives, God. How your grace abounds all the more. How you never leave us, you never forsake us. You give us provisions. You walk us through life. You teach us your ways. You give us salvation. God, we thank you for that. God, let that soak into our brains. Let that be part of our thought process in life. God, help us not focus so much on on negativity. Help us not get encompassed in fear. Help us not dwell on things in life that we think aren't going the way it should or something that somebody said to us. Help us to take that energy, Lord, and, and focus on positive. Help us to focus on faith in you and your word. Help us to renew our minds so that we can know your will. Help us to think about things that are pure and lovely and excellent and praiseworthy. Help us to set our minds on things above where you are, Jesus. You are seated on the throne in charge and in power. And help that to produce a change in us, Lord, that changes the world. We can be compassionate. We can be loved. We can, we can practice forgiveness in our daily lives. 
because of you. So God, like anything else, we surrender our mindset to you. We surrender our mindfulness to you. Help us to be mindful of these things. And Father, I pray for anyone right now who's, whose heart is heavy with the Holy Spirit to give it to you. Because God, we just want to be where you are. Because you're holy. Father, I pray for someone who wants that relationship with you today. They can just say something like this from their heart that they mean. They can say, God, God, I, I need you in my life. And, and I believe in your son, Jesus. Jesus, I believe that you lived that perfect life. And I believe that you died on the cross for me. And I believe you rose again. Jesus, forgive my sins. I want you to be Lord of my life and my heart. So if you said that prayer today, I mean, we'd love to know. We'd love to pray with you. Uh, we'll give you a Bible if you need one. We'd love to walk with you, tell you your next step. So you can get with me or Pastor Mike. You can call the church if you need to. You can go to the Welcome Center if you're here. We just, we just want, to, want to pray with you. So God, once again, as we stand and collect ourselves... As a body of believers, whether we're here or we're online, Lord, God, let us, as we praise and worship, saying we just want to be where you are, Lord, and how we love you. We love you, Jesus. And so let us just remember those things and be appreciative, God, and just, and, just, and just express that in our words and our actions today, Lord. Because we do. We are grateful, and we love you, and we thank you. And it's in your holy name that we pray. Amen.